Hello, readers and writers. I am Anthony L. Manna. Sometimes I'm called Professor, Grandpa, Tonio, the book guy, and the writing guy. Welcome to my folklore treasury, where very old stories called folk tales and fairy tales never grow old because they are told, remembered, and read over and over again and again and again. Today, I'm excited about sharing a story with you from a collection of these old tales I wrote, retold, and reimagined with my friend Sula Mitakidu. In a book, this book, Folk Tales from Greece, A Treasury of Delights. Anthony L. Mana and Sula Mitakidu. And there are photographs here by Georgios Katsangelos and also drawings, folklore drawings by Anastasia Valavanidu. Kahlo and the Goblins. Today's story is Callow and the Goblins. And actually, it should be called Callow and Marbo and the Goblins because they are sisters. As I read the story, please think about the ways Callow keeps the Goblins from harming her because they definitely want to, and why her sister Marbo, when she meets the Goblins, she can't protect herself from the harm. You just wonder why when you're reading this story. And also I wanna say at the very end, does this story have what you call a happy ending? Why and why not? Callow and the Goblins. Once in Greece, there was a mother who had two daughters, Callow and Marbo, Callo the youngest, was a happy child. Good-natured, as folks would often say about her. She loved to play with her friends. She loved to joke a lot. She laughed a lot. While Marbo, the oldest in the family, was ill-tempered. And at certain times, she could be downright, downright nasty. But such as it was, let's see what happens to the two of these, these two sisters. As they were growing up, Marbo became more and more jealous of her sister. And why not? <laughs> well, whenever and wherever she went, people admired Callow, praised her beauty and kindness, but they only felt, felt pity for Marbo because she was so nasty. Soon, Marbo felt no desire to leave the house. Every time her mother urged her to go out, Marbo would refuse and tell, tell her to send Callow. And Callow, always to please, would do the chores. One day, uh, it was Christmas Eve, as their mother was getting ready to make the traditional Christmas sweets, she looked inside the cupboard and could find no flour. Marbo, will you please go to the mill and grind some wheat? The mother asked. No, Marbo replied. Send Callow. Willingly, Callow loaded their little donkey with two sacks of wheat and went to the mill. When Callow reached the mill, she was surprised to find so many people waiting outside their turn to grind their wheat. By the time Callow, Callow's turn came, the sun had set and it had grown dark. The miller poured her wheat into the millstone and went to his room to sleep. Left alone, 
Callo sat on a pile of sacks and waited. It was dark in the mill with only a small oil lamp offering some light. Near midnight, Callo heard footsteps. She turned toward the noise, and what did she see? A gang of hideous goblins was sneaking into the mill and coming toward her. Goblins tall and short, fat and thin, all with skin as gray as dark clouds and thorny hair on their necks, shoulders, and arms. You see, this was the Christmas season when goblins come up to the earth to do their mischief. The goblins gathered around Callow and reached out to touch her with their long hands and sharp nails. Callow remained still, frozen with terror. We'll eat you up, Callow. We'll eat you up. We'll eat you up. The goblins shrieked. Despite her panic, Callow was quick to say, I know you are going to eat me, but you can't eat me like this. How can we eat her then? The goblins asked curiously. Not in this dress. You can't eat Callow in this dress. Callow needs a new dress. Dress? The goblins wondered. Quickly, let's go to get her a dress. And off the goblins went in all directions. Dress! Dress! They mumbled as they went here and as they went there. Dress! 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 They tried everything until they managed to sneak into a shop, choose the prettiest dress, and bring it to Callow. Again, they surrounded the girl and cried, We'll eat you up, Callow! We'll eat you up! You can't eat Callow like this, she replied. You can't eat me barefooted on Christmas Eve. Callow wants shoes. <laughs> shoes, yes. Shoes, 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 echoed the goblins as they went off to bring her shoes. They went here and they went there. They did this and they did that until they brought Callow the prettiest shoes. Now we'll eat you, Callow, they yelled. Oh no, they, they do not eat Callow like this. Callow needs a coat too, a coat please. Coat, 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 went the goblins as they set out again. When they brought her that coat, Callow asked for another, for a fur coat. And when they brought her the fur coat, she asked for an umbrella, and then gloves, and then a comb, and then face powder. And name it, she asked for it, wise as she is. So, with this and that, the new day dawned. When when the roosters crowed, the goblins rushed to hide in their holes. Everybody knows goblins can't live in daylight. Soon the miller woke up, ground the wheat, and loaded the flour on Callow's donkey. In the meantime, Callow tied all the things, all those things the goblins had given her onto her saddle. Then she started back to her village. Now, her mother had been very worried about Callow, but when she saw her returning with all those possessions, her worry turned to surprise. 
what's all this? Both her mother and sister asked. Things the goblins gave me at the mill, Callow answered. Marbo said nothing, but put it in her mind to go to the mill and ask the goblins to bring her gifts too. She had to hurry, though. There was very little time until Epiphany, the day when priests go out with holy water to banish goblins and other evil spirits. So Marble took all the flour from the pantry and spilled it here and there, spiteful as she is. By now, New Year's Eve was all gone. We have no flour. Again, which of you will go to the mill and grind some wheat? This, this time, I'll go, Marble cried. She loaded the donkey with wheat and set off, but she took her time to make sure she would have to spend the night at the mill. It was dark when she arrived. At around midnight, the goblins appeared. Immediately, they charged at Marbo. And what did she do? We'll eat you up, Marbo. We'll eat you up. We'll eat you up. They cried. They cried. They cried. Help. 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 Goblins are eating me. The miller heard her, ran to her rescue. By the time he lit his torch, the goblins had reached the girl and scratched her face. And that's when she developed a terrible welt that hurt terribly. Marbo returned to her village, sad, sad, sad. Seeing her sister so sad and unhappy, Callow took pity on her and gave her half of the goblins' gifts. And the goblins' face powder, Callow took it, and maybe it would work miracles, maybe it would work magic. It did, it very did. And Marbo's wounds were soon healed over a few days. And so the two sisters came together for the first time in loving kindness. And Marbo, from that day forward, became a very beautiful and pleasant young lady. And for the rest of their days, the mother, Callow and Marbo, lived happily, very happily. And that is Callow, Marbo, and the Goblins in Folk Tales from Greece, A Treasury of Delights by Anthony Manna and Sula Mitakidu. I hope you enjoyed the story and uh, I'll see you soon for another tale from my Folklore Library. Yasas. <laughs>